Hello, my friends. I'm going to be doing a winter pour today, winter colors, using Prism Pour Ultra Metallics. But first, I'd like to show you a couple of dried results. This was a Dutch pour that uh, I made a video on it. I will link it up above. But um, And it looked great when I stopped the video, but after it sat for about a half hour, hour, it had spread out so much that I didn't care for the look. So I blew it all out, and um, I like it now. I think it's quite dramatic and kind of an exciting painting. So that's that. And then I've been doing ribbon pours that I blow out, and... Uh, this one I did make a video on. It's not released yet. It'll be up on Saturday, I think. And I very much like it. Now, the difference between these two was this one, I poured all the paint, the colors, into a single cup and, and um, applied it to the canvas in a ribbon fashion. The other one was a Dutch pour, so I added the colors one at a time. So today... I'm going to do kind of a combination of the two. I'm going to combine the colors in one cup, but just lay it out in the traditional Dutch pour formation. But I will probably be blowing it all out to the edges. So that's the plan. And let me explain the colors. I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four. Uh, prism pour paints today. They're so beautiful. I'm using um, snow, frostbite. Look at this. And their annual inventory sale is good for two more days through December 3rd. So use my coupon code down below to save 25%. After that time, you can still save 20% by using my regular coupon code. Be sure to check down below. This is True Silver. Lovely. This one, I just want to drink it. It's so beautiful. This is called Blue Velvet. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. And lastly, the Chantilly Lace. A lovely white. And I, looks like snow. Looks like fresh fallen snow to me. And then I've got some Payne's Gray and um, Primary Blue in Li by Liquitex. So, my recipe is down below. It's a little different than I normally use for Dutch pours. I'm using the recommended recipe for the prism pours. And um, yes, I will detail that down below. So, this will be kind of a Dutch pour, but not really. Let me spread this all around. I wonder if I made enough. Oh, I want to show you one more thing. Um... When the paint doesn't reach over all the edges, I stop when I'm happy with the composition, whether or not it's reached over. And let me just show you quickly on this one. What I do, I paint in any voids with a, a solid color, usually a dark. I just, I just like the way that looks. Can you see I'm on the wrong side of the table? There we go. And just a little bit on, on this edge there. Anyway, yeah, it's usually just the corners, but um, sometimes a few more spots. Well, I'm getting dizzy looking at that. So anyway, that's what I do. And that's why I never worry about the edges. When it's dry, you just go in and fill in the blanks. All right, let me spread this around. It may have been a little skimpy, but, you know, I'm not going to worry about it, about covering the entire canvas, because I'm going to be adding quite a bit of color to this, and that will 
That will work. Typically, for the Dutch pour, I'm, I would always cover the whole canvas, but this is slightly different. Okay. We'll call that good. So now I'm going to layer the colors in this cup, starting with the... Uh, I've arranged them in dark light, dark light, just for fun. No particular reason. There's the... I'll put a good amount of each one. Paints gray, frostbite, primary blue, true silver. Uh, blue Velvet, oh, that color, that's my favorite so far, it's amazing, and Chantilly Lace. Okay, got plenty of color left in case I need it. And now I'm just going to pour it out kind of in a typical Dutch pour layout. So maybe, maybe here, whoops, my hand bumped into the, I'm not worrying about drips because as I said, I'm gonna blow it all out. Wow, pretty. Oh, that really looks like snow. A lot of white over here. I'll go over that a bit. Okay, let's blow this out and see what it looks like. I have plenty of paint left to add. So, hair dryer set on. I'm going to try it on low and see if it's powerful enough to move the paint around. On the Christmas one, I had to have it on high because the paint, the mix felt thicker, but this feels thinner to me, so we'll try low. No, I have to go to high. I may be done. I'll tell you, I'm just hooked on this technique. It's so easy and effective. I just gotta, that was absolutely dry and the paint's very thin there, so. Had to baby that corner a little bit. Ah, there's another corner and another one. Well, hmm, there's quite a bit of selling. I'm 
I'm not sure why. The, the mix has Floetrol and GAC 800 in it. I did not use the um, Artist Loft. I used Blitkrylic for my white base coat. So this doesn't look like the um, either of the other two. So I'm not sure what's causing all this. I'm not completely opposed to it, but I wasn't expecting it. And I'm going to let it sit for a while, and then I'll come back and um, decide if it needs more work. So, let me pause, and I'll check back in about half an hour. Okay, well, it's only been about 10 minutes, and I don't like it. It's just going to get worse, so uh, I don't, just don't like these big weird shaped cells. So I'm going to blow it out more and see what I get. I'm just going to start um, off center. I'm going to do a circular thing. That's very pretty. It's, it almost seems like it's setting up a little bit. It feels different than it did on the initial blowout. Okay, well, still doing that selling up business, but I think uh, it won't look quite like it did before because, um, what am I trying to say? I think by blowing it a second time, you, you absolutely get a different look. What? Oh, that's just a stupid thing to say. You know what? I, I don't think I like this, this color, the primary blue in Liquitex. I think that's pretty. Okay.
Surprise! <laughs> Probably not surprise. I couldn't leave it alone. I just wasn't happy with it. So I took my Mardi Gras beads and ran through it here and there. And I think it's more interesting. I think I might even be able to live with it. Especially like this area over up here um, where the weird cells meet the solid white and then the beads come out of it. It looks very um, ocean-like to me, very wavy. And this is interesting. This was a bead pull and, and I guess I tilted a little bit. I got that effect before I did some more bead pulling. Um, anyway, there you have it. I, I'm going to leave it alone, let it dry, and determine if it's a, a keeper or not. But it is interesting. So there you have it, my friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.